Hello everyone. I'm in my back garden to show you just how a couple of the vegetables are progressing. Then I'll take you to the allotment and show you how the cabbages and the tomatoes and courgettes and other veggies are doing. But for now, just show you the main crop onions which haven't done very well this year. I'm drying them out on the clothes horse because I don't have a shed or a greenhouse and this will have to do. We've had a heat wave as you all know and that actually helped to dry them a bit but then we had the storms and I had to take them in and now we have a couple of days of sunshine so they're back out again but because we've got rain expected today it's getting a bit of a nuisance taking them in and out so they're going to go into the spare room. These are Centurion here and these are Red Baron. The most important thing is to watch out for is the moisture on this part. This takes a longer time to dry out so sometimes I take a little bit of the skin off here so that the under leaves can dry out. I'm totally behind with the leaks, maybe about five, six weeks and I'm not sure that they're going to do well at all. This is Lion Prize Taker and this is Below Zero. A few weeks ago they were up to there beautiful and green and flowing about in the wind but now they're not and they should have gone in a long time ago but I'm going to try to plant them now. These are the stubby Paris market um, carrots that I planted and it's a very good idea to plant them in this window box and I've done this before and been quite successful so if I can find the other one of these I'll do two next year. This is where I'm going to plant the leeks. I can't be too precious or perfectionist about the weeds. I'll do a better little bit of weeding around the sidelines um, because I really have to prioritize and get those leeks in the ground. I managed to get the onions in before the heavens opened and it's just as well because it's been raining the whole day, which is five minutes in between and I've been working on the leek plot in between the rain and getting rather wet at the same time and the onions have joined the garlic um, the garlic that I've cut off but this is my my Lidl Spanish garlic it is the most cack-handed string of garlic you've ever seen um, but it is my pride and joy and I'm very proud of it so um, it's sad isn't it however back to the leeks I have been um, I've did the awful manure run yesterday when it was dry which is back breaking but I'm so pleased I did because this ground needed a bit of manure and leeks need that nitrogen and um, I've been making big holes in the ground for the leeks and you can use uh, several things you can use if you want to you can use if you have no tools you can use the end of a tool of some kind you can use a homemade dibber you can use what I use is this contraption which you can twist in the ground or you can use a small dibber that most stores have and make the holes. The holes are made quite deep and quite large so that the leeks you can put some water in later on and the leeks have room to grow and hopefully have a larger shaft, white shaft to them. Some people cut the roots off and all the tops off I do neither and um, state of my leeks at the moment these seedlings they really need all the help they can get before you plant the leeks they've been in a pot for a long while it's a good idea to soak them and then take off each individual little leek plantlet and then to put it in the ground and this is how I use this contraption turn it in turn it round wiggle it about take it out and then pop the leek inside. I finished off the leeks with a fine mesh. Both veggie mesh and garden naturally do two types of mesh, an ordinary mesh and a fine mesh. And I'm using the fine mesh because it might help prevent the allium leaf miner. I did say before that I can grow leeks in my garden because no one here grows leeks or onions so I wouldn't be bothered by the allium leaf miner but I found out in spring when I was harvesting the last of the leeks that there was a touch of it so 
I am going to try this. It looks a bit ungainly and bulky at the back because I don't want to cut this because I'll be probably using it for a larger space later on. I've been in and out all day in the wet and it'll be an absolute joy to get inside into the warmth. Well, I'm back on the allotment on plot two and this is the Bright Lights Swiss chard, which is doing so well. If you remember, I had to take off quite a bit of the um, leaf miner and I wasn't sure whether it would make it. But look at these leaves. They are just enormous. And I've grown about half of what I've grown last year because I do like eating this fresh. Lots of other things I like uh, freezing, but um, this I like eating fresh. So this actually suits me, this amount. And we come to the Greek chicantes and um, I'm trying to work out when's the best time to pick them when they're still soft and not dried and I'll do a mixture of freezing some of the soft beans and storing some of the dried beans they really are very large and where the broad beans were I planted winter cabbage. I plant them rather late. They've been stressed so I'm hoping they don't go to seed. Here I've got tundra and I've pressed them in really firmly and watered them and then pressed them in again because cabbages like to be planted very firmly. And here I've got January King and I've left them probably not enough space but um, I know they're going to get bigger than that but I'm hopeful and if they don't work and they go to seed well at least I've tried. And some more tundra and here I've got Paul and Becky's these four here Paul and Becky's Asturian tree cabbage which is an experiment again they're a bit leggy and I'm just hopeful they don't go to seed the birds just love the brassicas so it's important with these cabbages here to protect them with netting and I've got some more scaffold netting here which I will be putting up to protect them Well, the gladioli and the dahlias have been very forgiving and are coming up slowly. They may be a bit behind other people's, but they're doing okay. And I have planted out the cucumbers, which I had first planted and had hardened off in the garden, but we'd had such strange weather with hot and cold and hot and cold, and they all died off. So I had to sow again, and um, so they are also behind. On the other side are the cabbages, which were doing quite well but if you look closely I can see here they've been absolutely riddled by the cabbage uh, white butterflies little um, caterpillars and I've been killing off a few of them I think they were in here obviously they can't get through from this very nice netting but um, they were in here as eggs I think on the little seedlings that I had again I've planted as I've mentioned before Paul and Becky's Asturian tree cabbage but I can't find out much about it on the internet I think it grows to about two feet and is a sort of semi-perennial maybe a couple of years as long as you cut the flowers off and you can eat the flowers when they're sort of in bud as you would broccoli but other than that I can't find out much about them so it's a bit of an experiment and I can report back to you and tell you how they are doing And coming round the side of the cabbages, I can see two pots of potatoes. I really grew too many this year, about five pots here and another four at home. And I do love new potatoes, but they've been too many for me. Whereas these carrots, which are sweet candle, are showing there. Let's see if I can pull some out. A bit forked, but okay. Fine carrots. These have turned out to be something I really enjoy. So that's my haul of carrots. Then going around the corner from the carrots to the back of the plot there's a line of tomatoes and a line of three courgettes, one winter squash and one marrow. And this tomato plant here brandy wine I grew quite late because well I, I'm not very hopeful about getting much from it because I had misjudged the numbers of tomatoes I need now that I'm cutting down at those from home and building up those here. And next to it is shimmer, which again seed I got from Pennard plants, but 
It is such a funny shape and it does meant to have a little shimmer to its skin later on and they're meant to be tasty as well so I'm looking forward to them. This is the um, round oops, courgette and that's what you get and I've eaten all of these I've only given one away so two courgettes of this plant is absolutely fine for me. They have no courgettes at the moment they're going to take a little break and then they'll start coming back again and then I've grown one more courgette here called zucchini. As you can see from the back there's plenty of water in the ground because when it was really hot I would fill this up, well certainly these big ones, about four times and still they drain very quickly into the ground. Now they're taking a longer time to drain so they've got plenty of water. And here I have brandy boy tomatoes which are looking quite good and I know from last year that they did very well. And this is the crazy big winter squash called Marina di Chioggia and you can follow it all the way through and it's starting to climb up there and fight for space with the um, cucumbers and some other plants. I really don't have a lot of space. This is the marrow called tiger cross. If you're going to grow any marrows, grow tiger cross. I had two plants last year. I keep saying I got 19 marrows last year, which I just had to give away to everyone. And this year I've already had six of which I've given three away. And now this will go into a, a quiet time and then I'll have a little bit more later on. Coming back a bit, they're the Shirley tomatoes, which I've not grown before. I don't think they even need tying up. They seem to go straight up by themselves. So it'd be interesting to see what they taste like. At the back of plot one, these are the Benchmaster runner beans, oh, into the light. And this is the size really that you should pick them. They're tender then and they really are long and straight. And this is the size where it's gone over and they're going over very quickly. Um, they are prolific and I've been harvesting a lot of beans and it's difficult to keep up with them. I'm not sure if their flavour is as good as other beans. I'm not very good at uh, runner bean flavour. They all taste the same to me, all runner beans. But I'm going, next year what I'm going to do is to grow some, uh, six of these and six of something like Enorma and see if I can compare them. But I am getting a very good harvest from them. Moving on a bit to where the summer cabbages are. I've had some of these um, collards called Georgia Southern. They're going over now, some of them. They're very strange. Um, they're still palatable. I just um, cook them as I would kale and then eat them with some food and some... Uh, they're better with a, some kind of sauce, an onion sauce or onion sort of a gravy sauce or a tomato sauce. Um, but I don't know if... Uh, well, the jury's still out with them. Uh, they're very popular, it seems, in the States, so maybe I'll give them another go next year. Finally, these cabbages are starting to um, ball up into lovely little round cabbages, so I'll be taking one of these today, and the same with uh, Red Rookie over here. And they're quite small cabbages, but they are planted quite closely together. Then I come to one of my favourite beans, Cobra, which is a climbing French bean and again this is very prolific and these I can freeze they, they they never taste as good defrosted but once they're defrosted then to fry a little bit fry them a little bit with a um, little bit of flavoring and they'll be all right but um, they are lovely and again I have been eating an awful lot of these and I am very pleased with them believe it or not this is the black currant patch with the beautiful Echium vulgari growing here. The bees just love this. It's a relative of borage but it's a biennial and there is very beautiful linaria which a lot of people don't like. It's a pink form. They don't like it because they consider it a weed. It grows everywhere. But I do have black currants here and the birds haven't got at them. As you can see it's an awful lot of lovely black currants and I'm going to have to start harvesting them now. Well, that's the end of the video. I hope you found it interesting. Please feel free to comment or to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you again soon.